Hey everyone, welcome back to Markets for Millennials. Uh, this is Justin and this video will be looking particularly at the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust GBTC. Um, what I'll be doing is taking a look at price, um, where it's at in relation to Bitcoin, um, and also looking at the quarterly reports. That's what I'm going to spend most of the time on today. Uh, go ahead and take a moment and smash the like button subscribe, share this video with someone who you think would find it helpful and interesting. To start out, we'll take a to kind of just a big picture view of what's happening um, in the crypto market with Bitcoin specifically, because as I've said many times before, GBTC depends on what happens with Bitcoin as a whole. And that's true of any fund which tracks Bitcoin. And so after the uh, move up, and then the peak, the near-term peak, April 14th, uh, we failed to make the higher high, and Elon tweeted, and then we had this major meltdown. And then we consolidated for, you know, over two months, or about just two and a half months. And then ever since the end of, or the back end of July, we've been on a rise in Bitcoin. And so um, we are looking at, if I put my art back up here, um, we had the most important trend line in crypto, which uh, we identified a long time ago and people who were part of CTM have been on this from the very beginning. Um, and so we had this descending trend line. Once we broke out of it, um, then it's been off to the races. And it, you know, it takes time to, from, to go from the bottom to the top. Um, one of the other Bitcoin videos I did, I just want to call attention to it. Um, I did say that generally from the peak to the low, uh, the move up is usually slightly longer to get to all-time highs or to retake the all-time high. And so um, basically what I was looking at was by the end of August, somewhere in this range right here, um, where we would... Uh, where we would get back near the all-time high and that's going from the wick low down here just just mentioning that because obviously the lowest closing uh, price daily closing price was uh, later on and so maybe it would take even longer um, but as you can see I've got these trend lines um, you know we've obviously broken the downside momentum and because of market symmetry, I've been talking about this a lot in many of my videos, you just keep cloning these descending trend lines and they give you a really good baseline uh, for where you can find resistance and support. As you can see, if I uh, make these lines darker so you can see them, you can actually like trace this. Obviously most important trend line was resistance. Below that, support, um, and then we've landed on the next line up as support. Um, so just pointing that out um, as we get started so that we have some situational awareness on what's happening with GBTC's price action. So let me go over to GBTC. Um, and I've got some different things that I've marked here, so I should actually turn this uh, off for a second so you guys can see. Um, obviously, what you notice about GBTC, you don't, you see a lot of, uh, because, you know, crypto trades 24-7, but GBTC trades OTC. Um, you see a lot of gapping uh, across this whole chart, but in general, it does follow uh, Bitcoin. Although one thing I had pointed out previously is GBTC, uh, oops, I just made this all appear again. GBTC peaked in February instead of in April where uh, Bitcoin peaked. So it's really interesting. So let me turn this back off again because I don't want to disrupt and distract from what's going on. Uh, so price had been kind of tracking Bitcoin to the downside. We had our lowest closing low the same time that Bitcoin had its lowest closing low. Um, we had a couple of days up and then just a massive, this was 24% up. Um, and actually, if you if you look, Bitcoin today, if you look at the top right of the screen, you can see the price has was up 7% today. And if you go, let me go back to Bitcoin for a minute. Um, a lot of that price movement um, and we went basically over $1,000 to the upside. I think it was in a, in a minute, let me find it, in a minute we went up $700. And so a lot of quick price movement. Let me go back to my daily chart. Um, and so depending on what happens this weekend, um, if, you know, so we bounced off of that, uh, let me put it back up. We bounced off on Bitcoin of this support line, this descending trend line. 
Um, right now we're in this channel, so we're at the top end of the channel. Um, I actually expect us to break the top side of this channel so that we can establish a new upper band of the channel. Um, and I suspect if I, if I clone this, I suspect we could find some symmetry uh, maybe somewhere along here. Um, and I, I think that we'll find the top band, there, I think maybe right there. Um, let me delete that. So I think, I, I do think that it's possible we pop up above this and then this becomes our main support line. Um, and, uh, and I think that'll get us to where we are, where we need to be at the end of August. That's just my, my personal view. Obviously, I'm not married to that view. Um, I'll change if price shows me something different. But basically, ever since, you know, July 19th, I said, okay, we're basically at the bottom. We're just going to be on our way up until we get to new all-time highs. And, uh, and just if you paid attention to social media, you know, you saw um, right around here after we had the 10 green days in a row, um, we had a couple of down days. People were like, oh, dead cat bounce. We're going to go down 20,000. Obviously not. We got up to the most important trend line in crypto and got rejected on the first day. People were like, oh, it's a dead cat bounce. We're going to go down to 20,000. Nope. We broke it. We've retested it. We're resuming off. Okay. Um, so we're on, the, we're on the way up. So going back to GBTC, um, I am expecting... Uh, price to continue to take off. And if we do what I said previously, where um, Bitcoin actually does break that uh, top side um, resistance line on the, uh, you know, the line, if I mark it on here, um, the line that's going up like that, um, then I think that we will uh, have potentially this weekend, if price keeps going up, we will have another 10 to 20 percent up day. Um, and actually, if you go back, um, I, I should have looked this up beforehand. Um, I don't remember from any from my previous uh, research. Um, but one of the things that I talked about, um, and I'll, I'll turn this to log scale so it's a little easier. Um, one of the things that I talked about was in the 2017 bull run, um, you had Bit GBTC mostly underperformed for the entire cycle. And there were only small periods of time where price on GBTC outperformed uh, Bitcoin um, to where by the end, you know, GBTC had, had increased by the same percentage um, that uh, that Bitcoin did. And so um, if you actually pay it, if you actually look, um, I don't remember, let me see, where did I find it? Some of GBTC's, let me turn it off log scale, maybe that'll help. Um, some of GBTC's greatest price moves um, happened after a weekend. And so I think that that's something that you should be uh, aware of. Um, so you had like this move here, um, August 4th to August 7th. August 7th, it was up 13%. Um, you had between August 11th of 2017 and August 14th, a 20% move up. Um, you had, uh, let's see here, let's see here. Uh, I mean, to the downside too, but I mean, a lot of the increases like a lot of the largest increases like this one 23 percent between november 24th and 27th um and so uh you know it's possible to get multiple 20 percent moves on gbtc after a weekend depending on what price action does um, excuse me on that a sec so i'm looking for gbtc to to continue to track bitcoin to the upside now what were all those things on the screen that i was that I just, you know, hid from the view. Well, uh, GBT, I'm sorry, Grayscale released their quarterly SEC reports. Now I've been looking for these for a long time and uh, it turns out that the days that they were reported, um, let me, I need to actually go to the Grayscale website. I won't do that. Um, I won't take the time. But uh, they actually filed them long before they released them. So I've actually been waiting, you know, it was supposed to be approximately between August 6th and August 10th when these got released and um, to the public, but they were filed um, even earlier than that. They were, they were actually mostly filed in July. So there were two reports um, that I wanna highlight. Um, let's see, so this is page 22. So the first one was the Form 10Q. I talked about this in the last, uh, in the GBTC video, looking under the hood. Um, if you want to find that in the GBTC playlist. Um, and then the other one, let me go back to the page that I want to be on. Okay. 
And then the other one, this one's page 28, was a form 8K. Now there, they are different forms. The form, um, the, the previous form that I showed you uh, is, it basically exists uh, for the purpose of reporting on, you know, price on Bitcoin purchased, Bitcoin sold, um, fees collected, and things like that. So um, the form 10 is something that we're gonna see reported um, every quarter. Um, the other item, the form 8K, is uh, is not. It doesn't necessarily have to be filed. It only is filed when uh, when something significant happens. So what had happened previously um, was. Let me. Uh, I can actually show you here. Um, if you look, um, I'll try to highlight it. On April 30th, um, I talked about this in my previous video. Uh, they were the the parent company, DCG. Digital Currency Group was, um, it, they had a previous agreement to purchase $250 million worth of GBTC shares, and they modified it to up to $750 million worth of, cha of shares. And in order to make that a reality, they had to file a Form 8K. And so usually when there's something like that that happens, um, they have to file the 8K. But if, if nothing happens, then there's no necessity for the 8K filing. But there was an 8K filing, so I think that's really interesting, and I'll talk about it in a second. And this was the thing that I was paying a lot of attention to. Okay, I talked in my video, GBTC looking under the hood, that I thought it was a pretty big deal that they adapted their purchase agreement from $250 million to 500, or I'm, I'm sorry, upping it by $500 million to a total of $750 million that they have to deploy towards the purchase of GBTC shares. Um, now, what I have up on the screen right now was the previous report. So maybe I should zoom this in so it's a little easier to see. Um, so this was the previous one. Um, they had an agreement early on um, um, in March. Uh, and so in March, they made a purchase. And then in early April, April 30th, they, uh, they talked about approving the, the higher degree of purchase. So there's some things I want to show you here. Um, uh, so first thing is um, they made some purchases during the month of March. That was when price was consolidating. It's very important to note that during the month of March, price had not made a new all-time high. In fact, the beginning of March, um, in March 10th, uh, it was below its all-time high. Okay, so from March 10th, they approved the purchases and they purchased all throughout the month of March until April. And so uh, this, the one that I talked about last time, they purchased 1 million, like basically 1.7 million around that number of shares in the month of March, between March 10th and March 31st at an average price of 47.94. Okay, so the average price of that was somewhere around here during the month of March, maybe a little bit lower. Okay, um, so my guess would be that Grayscale probably bought at these two red candles or maybe at this, or, or maybe at these two green candles. That would be my guess, okay? Um, that was the agreement then, and then they upped it um, in April. Now, what happened uh, between, um, what happened between the end of March and April 30th? Well, what happened, so here is the last day of March March 31st, GBTC closed at $50.04. On April 30th, um, price was trading at a close of $46.85. So what's interesting is price not only didn't make a new all-time high by then, um, you, we all know what was happening on Bitcoin, but even GBTC didn't make a high, an April 14th high like Bitcoin did. And so something was wrong here. And so I think it, I, I said before in my previous video that it was very interesting that DCG had its agreement to purchase shares increased on April 30th when we were still trading um, below the previous all-time high. And um, on April 30th, the closing price was below the average purchase price that um, DCG bought in March, okay? So that was something I wanted to point out there. Now I suggested back, uh, let's see, I did the video back in June, I believe. I suggested um, at the time, May or June, I think, 
that maybe the reason why when Bitcoin w dropped um, $10,000 at one point in a day, that the, the price movement on GBTC was relatively muted. And I thought that there was a reason for that. And I suspected back then, and I hypothesized that during April, May, and June, they probably were making purchases. And so um, I've been looking forward to this report because I wanted to see what was going to happen. Okay, so um, I pulled up the report. So this is the first thing I wanna focus on. I'm gonna zoom this in for you so you can see. Um, of interest, that same spot in the previous report, I now have for the new report. And what you actually see is during the month of April, they purchased another two million, over two, almost two and a half million shares. Okay, that is almost a million shares more than they purchased in March of, of, uh, of earlier this year. Okay, and then uh, that their average price was 45.96. So also at a lower price than they purchased for in March. And then what's really interesting to me, because I mean, if you think about it, think about what was going on in April. Bitcoin had, was making a new all time high, but GBTC wasn't. It was very easy to look at this price action and say, well, GBTC has been underperforming. It's only a matter of time before it rockets up in price. Right. So maybe a lot of people were expecting that after being held down, that it was going to just shoot up and we were going to get more 20 percent plus uh, in price increases. Well, that didn't happen. I suspect that that's why they purchased so many shares in April. They were expecting a run up. Right. And then when price didn't run up and it actually crashed in May, see, like I'm I'm wondering, I, I suspect that at the beginning of May that a lot of these purchases were right here in May. And then as soon as it crashed, I think they stopped purchasing. Um, or perhaps, because uh, they bought, let's see, let me look again. Um, they bought in May, but they did not buy in June. So then maybe they bought more shares in here. Did they buy them here or did they buy them here? I'm not really sure. Um, I suspect, like I said, that maybe they were buying early in May and then when price crashed, they were nervous because they thought, okay, well, what's price doing? Right, because we knew what was happening on Bitcoin, GBTC was also happening. But I also think that maybe when price had the huge crash, that's when they deployed uh, some of this money as well. And I'm honestly surprised that we didn't see a higher number of shares purchased in May because of that. And then I'm also surprised that there's no report of any shares bought in June. There were no shares bought during this time right when it was far closer to the low now there could be a couple of reasons for that one reason could be that dcg doesn't actually want any more gbtc uh, shares so what it says here down here the share purchase authorization does not obligate them to purchase any so a lot of people think that because they can spend 750 750 million that they will that they have to they don't have to they are not obligated as you see here on the screen Okay, so I wonder, th this is I think my one caveat to my view on GBTC that is something to be aware of. Okay, remember, always be aware of your risk. If DCG finds something wrong with GBTC, you know, think about the premium, think about the, the, the fees that they have to pay, right? Those are real risks. Okay, and if GBTC is not actually as strong, you know, if GBTC ends up not becoming an ETF and other ones become ETFs first, I personally don't think that that's going to be a problem for GBTC, but uh, it is a potential risk. So maybe it's possible that during this time, they were a little gun shy about pulling the trigger, especially because by this point, we had had such a huge price drop you know, we saw a 40 to 50% price drop in this by this time. So it's possible that they were just being cautious with their purchases. So unfortunately for me, uh, this actually leaves me with a few more questions than answers because I'm surprised that they were not buying here. However, I do think, uh, and, and I, I hate to say this, that we may have to wait until the filing from, uh, from quarter three and so that would mean that it's gonna be uh, potentially Oct late October or early November before we really know. 
And what sucks about that is price could be, I mean, if price continues to go up, price could be up here by the time we figure that out. Okay, so it is a risk, but I, I'm wondering if they didn't buy in June because they were waiting to see what would happen. And that maybe as price continued to bottom, not only on GBTC, but also on Bitcoin overall, and especially now that we have um, gone on the rise, I wonder if they are, if, you know, when the next report comes, if they will have bought and deployed more of their money um, to buy more shares either in July or in the beginning of this month in August. So, like I said, unfortunately, it didn't turn out the way I suspected. Um, it's so funny because if I were them, I would have bought, I would have used all my money. I would have deployed all my money in the month of June. Um, like whatever I had left because, uh, you know, after this kind of a price move, if I am confident in Bitcoin overall, then I have to be confident in GBTC. So, I mean, look at like when we had these, these lows here in, uh, you know, June 8th, right? This, the low, the closing low, 2745. Uh, we had this that wicked down even lower, closed higher, but ended even lower. Um, those were in the month of June. Those would have been good buying opportunities. So the way I see this, I would have bought. But that's obviously just me. I'm not DCG. I'm not Grayscale. So um, I can only say what I, what I probably would have done. Um, so anyway, I, what I did on my chart, now I can show you, is I kind of uh, went through and looked to see what happened. Right, so previous, uh, prior to March 31st, right, um, DCG purchased uh, 1,695,217 shares, um, a value of a little over $81 million. And at that time, at the end of March, they still had 168, almost $169 million to deploy. Right, April comes along and they, on April 30th um, came to the agreement. I'll talk about that again in a second. But even during April, before they increased their agreement, they purchased um, 2,442,814 more shares and at a value of $112 million, 271,371, okay? At the end of the month, uh, right, so at this point they would have had, this looks like they would have had close to 50 to $60 million left to spend. Um, here, uh, it turns out that they had, um, that they increased in April, they increased the price that they could uh, purchase shares, uh, the, the amount of money that they could purchase. They bought um, between April and May another um, 433,000-ish shares, obviously I'm rounding, at a value of $19.5 million. That means, and then they didn't buy in June. So this means that they have deployed $213 million. This means that they have remaining $536.9 million to deploy um, between June and uh, the end of September, September 30th. Where are we? Right there. So the question is, will they buy, did they buy already, or will they buy in this range? And I suspect that they will or that they already have. Um, of course, I could be completely wrong. So to me, this is like, you know, for those who doubt GBTC and wonder about GBTC and its efficacy, I think this is bullish, right? Bitcoin is bullish, therefore I think GBTC is bullish. And I would say the same thing for any of the other uh, trusts or the any of the other funds. Look at. Um, Osprey Bitcoin Trust is not even tracking as well as GBTC. EBIT, kind of right on track. Uh, BTCC.U, um, kind of on track. And then a lot of people look at the Bitwise Fund. The Bitwise Fund is actually still also underperforming GBTC. So to me, GBTC is the winner. It's, it's, it's proven. It's been around the longest, longer than anything else. Um, and even if they are not first to the ETF game, um, I think it'll just be a matter of time before they get an ETF. And that leads me to the other form, um, Form 8K. I thought this was interesting because, let's see, this is page 28, so I need to remember that. Um, what it says is, Grayscale Investments LLC 
of Grayscale Bitcoin Trust has engaged the Bank of New York Mellon, a New York corporation authorized to do a banking business, to provide the trust with certain administrative and accounting services pursuant to the Fund Administration and Accounting Agreement with BNY Mellon, which became effective July 9th, 2021. Right, so July 9th of 2021 was right here. Let's put this in green. All right, July 9th. Right, so to me, this is really important. I, I am very interested in this. If you go through, there's a whole bunch of legal jargon and all that stuff. A lot of stuff about what BNY is allowed to do or not allowed to do. But what caught my eye is in the like kind of the appendix area, Schedule One, Schedule of Services, right? BNY Mellon shall provide the following valuation and computation accounting services for the trust. Right, so a couple of things that, uh, that stuck out to me, individual ledgers for trust assets, maintaining financial books and records, tax lots, um, calculate capital gains and losses, um, quotes for pricing services, compute net net asset value, and then this one, transmit or make available a copy of the daily portfolio valuation to the sponsor. So. What I think is interesting about this um, is if you look through this, I'm wondering if this is preparation potentially for an ETF rollover. Um, I still have to do more research into BNY Mellon and its business and uh, the things that are going on, but at first glance when I read through this, this is the page that caught my eye. Because to me, I'm thinking why would Grayscale uh, ask for the services of a bank? And I wonder, I, I wonder if it has to do with regulatory concerns. I wonder if it has to do with preparation for an ETF. Um, and some of those things are the things that caught my eye. So to me, given that uh, DCG has a lot of money to deploy and that Grayscale is getting, uh, is, is getting involved with, um, with a bank, to me is a pretty good sign. It seems bullish to me. Um, and then on top of that, obviously, uh, I don't have an article of it up, but the news of, of Grayscale hiring um, an ETF guy to kind of head up their ETF um, process. Um, to me, all of those things point to positive signs in the future. Now, um, I don't know when there would be an ETF, if there is one. I have actually believed for a long time, let me get rid of these, I have believed for a long time that we probably won't get the ETF until after the peak, uh, this cycle peak. So I think before 2022 is not realistic. It's really interesting because a lot of people were saying back in February and March that we were going to get an ETF really soon. I, don't, I, I never thought we would get one in 2021. I actually suspect if, if I had to give my best guess, now I'm no expert, so this take this with a grain of salt. But if I had to guess, I would say that we'll get one sometime in Q2 or Q3 of 2022. That's my guess. And the reason why is because I don't foresee it happening before the end of this year. And then I think as uh, Bitcoin has its blow off top and starts to come down and GBTC comes down with it like it did back here after the 2018 blow off top, right? If you look at this, I think that as price comes down, it's going to cause some concern. And I think that the SEC is going to say, hey, no, this is too risky. It's, it's a problem. Um, and so I don't think we're gonna get one, maybe not even by the end of Q2, of 2022. Um, but I think as you start to see price uh, find a bottom and normalize and get closer to uh, the capitulation low, which usually happens in Bitcoin's bear market, which to me seems like it would be Q3 potentially, or maybe Q4 2022, I think that's when we're going to get the rollout of the first Bitcoin ETF. Um, and I don't honestly don't think it's going to happen any earlier. That's just my opinion. Like I said, I'm no expert, so don't you know, hold that over my head. Don't go tell all your friends that that's when the Bitcoin ETF is going to happen. Um, but I do think when, when ETFs come along for Bitcoin and they are approved in the US, um, I think Grayscale will have a fairly quick and seamless transition. So that's my look under the hood. I am bullish on GBTC. Um, my price target, um, as I've said before, 
Um, what I'm looking at is somewhere in the in the 200s range. I'm right now I'm looking in the low 200s before the end of 2021. Um, but it's possible it could overshoot that. But I'm also willing to take it between 180 and 200. And so that's my view on GBTC. Thank you for watching. Once again, hit the like button and share this with somebody and subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet. Hope you have a great day and a great weekend and I'll see you guys next time.